Okay. Our <clears throat> our scripture reading today comes from Matthew chapter 15, verses 21 to 28. So hear these words this morning. <clears throat> Leaving that place, Jesus withdrew to the region of Tyre and Sidon. A Canaan, Canaanite woman from that vicinity came to him crying out, Lord, son of David, have mercy on me. My daughter is demon possessed and suffered and, and is suffering terribly. Jesus did not answer a word. So his disciples came to him and urged him, send her away for she keeps crying out after us. He answered, I was sent only to the lost sheep of Israel. The woman came and knelt before him. Lord, help me, she said. He replied, it is not right to take the children's bread and toss it to the dogs. Yes, it is, Lord, she said. Even the dogs eat the crumbs that fall from their master's table. Then Jesus said to her, woman, you have great faith. Your request is granted. And her daughter was healed at that moment. And this is the word of the Lord. So this is a fun passage, isn't it? I mean, it really doesn't make Jesus out in the in the best of lights when when you just look at it, um, when when you just look at it like this. But so what's happening here up to this point? Jesus had learned that his cousin John the Baptist had been beheaded and he was died. So Jesus was trying to withdraw. Jesus was trying to get away from people so he could mourn, so he could have some time to um, just compose himself to get himself back together because he was in grief over John the Baptist dying and everywhere he went people kept coming to him at the beginning of Matthew chapter 15 Jesus is tested once again the Pharisees uh, in the region he was in came up to him and were testing him about the law one of the things that they were testing him about is they said what uh, Jesus your disciples don't wash their hands as is the tradition of the elders notice it says as the tradition he's not they're not trying to catch jesus on <clears throat> on um breaking torah breaking the law breaking the first five books that, that we know of in the old testament they're trying to trap jesus into breaking the tradition that has been set of washing their hands and jesus goes into this course it's not wash it's not not washing your hands that defiles you. It's what goes into a person and what comes out of a person that defiles you. So if you think about it, Jesus is really talking about the heart of the matter. He's talking about why you should do stuff. He, he's talking about making sure that you don't just like ceremonially wash yourself to make yourself look good on the outside. He's more concerned with what you're, what you are on the inside. And <clears throat> He's also saying what comes into you can cause you to be defiled on the outside. So we have to ask ourselves a lot of times, what shows do you watch on TV most of the time? What kind of junk do we fill our heads with 90% of the week? And then how do we treat other people? What ends up happening is we treat other people based upon what we end up watching based upon the actions of the characters of, of, of the books, of, of the stories, of the interactions we have during the week. That ends up how we treat people. But what if what if we allowed ourselves to be filled with the good news of Christ? What if we spent more time focusing on the goodness of Christ and Christ's mission in the world? Would anything come out of us that defiles us? Most likely not. We would come to a place where we can um, exhibit and show more of the kingdom of heaven that's all around us. So it's not what comes into a person. It's what comes out. But what comes into a person influences how we act because how we think is how we act. And that gets really challenging. So then the next thing, it, Jesus is continuing to go away. He's continuing to withdraw so he goes to the region of Tyre and Sidon and the next verse we hear this Canaanite woman come to him and say Lord my daughter is demon possessed I need you to help me now what's interesting is that this gospel or this story is also recorded in the gospel of Mark but in Mark calls her a Syrophoenician woman 
Now, this is just a side note. Uh, Matthew does this on purpose. Every gospel writer has an agenda. Every gospel writer has an intention. And when Matthew calls this person a Canaanite woman, Canaanites really didn't exist at, at this particular time, but he's showing these are the outsiders. These are the ones that you try that that were trying to expel that get 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 rid of. These, these are the ones that needed to be gone. And and so Matthew is trying to show that an outsider, an, an unprivileged person is coming <clears throat> asking for help. In Mark, it's the same type of thing, but it's a different audience. So it's a it's a Syrophoenician woman. Same story, just kind of different agendas and how they approach it. Now, Jesus looks at or Jesus is in the presence and this and and and, and this mother comes up to him and says, I need you to heal my demon possessed daughter. She's suffering terribly. And Jesus ignores her. You know. How often in scripture do we see Jesus ignoring people? Most of the time when someone comes up to Jesus, it's he heard and he responded and had compassion upon the people. But this particular time, Jesus ignores her. It's the disciples that have to go to him and say, send her away. And Jesus says, I am only here for the lost sheep of Israel. And then the woman um, and, and then he looks at the woman and he says, it is not right. To, oh, hang on. But it, what does it say? It is not right to take the children's bread and toss it to the dogs. Children's bread would be the, the, the Jewish people's uh, bread, which is a teaching and the, and, and the Torah and toss it to the jo- dogs, which is a kind of a way to explain the Gentiles, the non people. And the Canaanite woman, the, the mother said, Yes, it is, Lord. She said, Even the dogs eat the crumbs that fall from their master's table. And that's when Jesus said to her, Woman, you have great faith. Your daughter has healed you. <clears throat> the mother's heart was revealed in that moment. She probably heard a lot of derogatory stuff wherever she was. She was suffering because her daughter was suffering. She could have let all of that stuff influence how she approached Jesus and been more negative and been more demanding. But no, what does she say? She says, yes, Lord, but even the dogs eat the crumbs from the master's table. Jesus saw her intention He saw her heart. He saw her faith. And what this reveals to us is that faith is not just something that's that's inward within us. Faith is an outward expression. We believe by faith that all this stuff is true. But how we act it out reveals where our heart truly is. That's why James says faith without works is dead. And so this woman changed Jesus' mind in that moment. Now, there's several interpretations that you can have here. I'm not going to tell you which one I think is the interpretation. I'm going to let you do it. None of these interpretations should influence how you believe or think about Jesus. But they all should help you understand from a greater worldview. There are several scholars that think that Jesus was just testing the woman just to kind of see what she was going to say, how she was going to respond. And and she apparently checked the right box and did the right thing. So Jesus said, because you answered correctly, your, your daughter is healed. Other scholars will say that Jesus was learning. And remember, Jesus was a hundred percent God and a hundred percent man. Because he was God does not mean that his man side, his human side, did not have to learn anything. Luke says that he grew in wisdom and stature. Jesus was continually learning. Jesus was always learning how to respond to people and learning about the region. And you notice he says, I was sent to the lost sheep in Israel. Well, he says that because in Matthew chapter 10, he sends his disciples out to the lost sheep. 
He sends his disciples out to the people of Israel, not to the Gentiles, not to everyone else, but only to the people of Israel. And so he's sending them out to the lost sheep. So he already has this in mind of what he was doing. And some scholars are going to say is that because of the faith of this mother, this is the moment where Jesus realized he was not just sent to the Jewish people who were lost, but also to the Gentiles, the rest of the world. Other scholars could say that um, in, in Jesus's human side, he was learning how not to be racist. The dogs would have been a derogatory term in some respect. It depends on how you look at it. But um, calling him, calling someone a dog would not have really been the nicest thing. So there are people and scholars who say that Jesus was racist and he learned not to be racist at that moment, which impacted his ministry later on. You can choose whichever interpretation you want on that. The whole point of me telling you these three different interpretations is so you can see what the worldly scholarly view is, but also to see See how Jesus also expects us to live in this world. You know, a, a few, a couple weeks ago, I, I, I gave the title of this sermon called, and, and I was calling it Openness, uh, because Jesus was open to healing the woman. Um, but I was listening to a song this morning uh, by Casting Crowns, and there's there's a song, it's a really good, I, I like it, uh, it's, it's called One Awkward Moment. And it's a story of, of of how every interaction we make, we we have every person we encounter. We're all we could have an awkward moment where somehow it becomes talking about spiritual things, where we have to let ourselves go and say, "I need to tell you about Jesus. I need to tell you about this kingdom of God. I need to tell you the value that God has placed on you so you can live it out. It could be a very awkward moment because you're not going to feel the most confident in that moment. You're not going to think that they're going to listen correctly. You don't know how they're going to respond. There are these awkward moments we have in our lives. And this is what I would consider an awkward moment, especially for the disciples in the presence of Jesus, their master. But through all of this, the disciples are continually learning who Jesus is, what his mission is, and what he's, what he's going to do about it. So you can also look at it as that fourth approach is what are the disciples learning in this moment over how Jesus interacts with the woman? Now, what do we do with stories like this where we don't always know the right interpretation. We don't, we, we, we don't really know what, what to do with it. You wrestle with it. You don't find a quick and easy answer. One of the issues we have in our world today is we are so quick to looking things up to get an answer right then and there that it does nothing to us on the inside. People are so quick for information we're not seeking wisdom or transformation. So with a passage like this, we have to wrestle it. You have to be like Jacob was in Genesis and wrestle God. Tell me what it is that you want me to get out of this passage today. Give us today our daily bread. Help us to understand how we live as a disciple following you today. Help me wrestle with this. Help it come into my heart, Lord, and transform me so that I can be the person, so that I can be the person that you're calling me to be in this world. Wrestle with the text. Don't try to go for such a quick answer because there's something really interesting. And as I was looking at this passage this week, as I was studying it, uh, I was listening to it from a Jewish perspective. And there was something interesting in here. He was in the region of Tyre and Sidon. This is also the same place where Elijah met with a widow in Sidon, in the region of Sidon in 1 Kings 17. 
she would have had uh, she and, and when she saw Elijah coming, uh, Elijah basically says, hey, give me some bread because the Lord the Lord had already told Elijah that she was going to uh, provide for him and give him the sustenance and, and the food never went out or the, the food never uh, ran out. But the widow would have been eating crumbs to feed her and her son. And the word used for master would have also been something that people would have called Elijah. And so when Elijah was at the table and the crumbs fell down, the dogs would have come in and eat the crumbs from the table. So in essence, this this mother could know her text, could know the story to tie it back into Elijah, back into the people of God. Because yes, Lord, but even the dogs eat the crumbs from the master's table. So she's trying to say, possibly, that she has been following Elijah because she has been from the region where the widow and her son were taken care of and were told all about the good news of God through the life of the prophet Elijah. All of this to say, when we take time to truly look at the text and try to understand the history, you can see how everything in the Old Testament is brought to light and fulfillment in the New Testament. And when you look at it this way, there's much greater depth in the connection of the storylines. You can see how everything Jesus does is reclaiming Israel's place in the world. He is reclaiming what it means to be human. He is showing the world how Israel was supposed to be, yes, but how humanity is supposed to be. And because the woman knew their story, her faith was lived out. And Jesus saw that. And he responded in faith and healed her daughter. There's always something that people are trying to tell us when they talk. They may be trying to connect an event from their past into the words they say today. They may not come out and say it. You may not understand that people may say an event from your past and try to connect it to you today. There's always something more when we listen. And in this moment, no matter what you, no matter how you interpret Jesus, uh, Jesus's interaction here, but he was listening to the mother and he heard her heartfelt cry and he heard that she was truly seeking him for him. There's people that you're going to interact with this coming week. How are you going to respond to them? Are you going to listen and hear what it is they have to say? Are we going to respond in faith and tell people God's grace is with them. May they be changed and transformed. Or do we just leave it alone? That's on us. Let's pray. Grace, holy God, thank you for your word. Thank you for a chance to wrestle with it. Thank you for reminding us we don't always have to have the answers, but you are a God <clears throat> who is working in us and through us. You are a God who is creating us and molding us to be your people. Speak to us, Lord. Remind us once again how you call us to live in this world. And may we, above all, be your disciples to share and to show your kingdom of heaven, which is all around us. And all God's people said, Amen. <laughs>